to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8. The mystery of divine intervention. No matter who you are, no matter your spiritual level, your intellectual level, you will get to a point in your life and your destiny, listen carefully, where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny. Remember that what we receive every week here, we are handed keys. The assignment of keys is not only to open doors, but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited. The presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited. You can open the door at will and close the door at will. Revelation 3, 7 and 8, right? I'm he that was dead and now is alive. And I hold the key of David. Please go back to verse 7. He of David. He that openeth by reason of that key. No man can shut. And he that shutteth and no man can open. Because of a key that you hold. These revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory. The victory of Christ and the finished work of Christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential. The reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand, thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the Spirit of God. When you receive that revelation, the grace for performance also comes with the revelation. You see how it works. You're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit follows revelations. The anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity. The anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth. If you want the anointing, you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing. Are we together? Exodus 3 and verse 8. Let's get to work very quickly. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers. Now, as you know, our dominion in this kingdom is based on the lights that we have but also based on the systems of advantage that we access. No one is advantaged by default. Uh -uh. For as long as you are born here on earth, doesn't matter if you come from a rich family, you may have a financial advantage, but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage. Are we together? Now, through the revelation of God's word, we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of scripture, systems of advantage, favor, mercy, are we together? Speed, relationships, the anointing, understanding, 
wisdom so that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny and in no time you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the Christ in reality my little children he said of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you he was speaking to believers those who were already saved but he was talking about the formation of Christ it's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of God but the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can, even though you are saved, you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials. An heir, the Bible says, as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave. Even though he's an heir, but provided he's a child, void of understanding, void of spiritual intelligence, he differeth not from a slave. Even though he be lord of all, he's under tutors and governors. So it takes light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Are we blessed? I'm saying all this so that the Lord will, by this teaching, alongside others, plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he thrives lawfully there, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart. I'm hungry for you, hungry for you. I have come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you, thirsty for you. I have come to the waters to drink. Now tarry and not let you go. That's just the part I wanted to sing for you to hear. Like Jacob, Lord change my life. Not through superstition, but through exact exegesis of truth. Let me not move around just saying I am a Christian. No results or results once a year. Not bringing glory to the name of the Lord. No. And then not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually no you must embrace the entire counsel of God there is only one thing that is greater than the truth the whole truth the whole truth Are we blessed? Divine intervention. Daniel chapter 3. Let's study scripture. Daniel chapter 3. 
Daniel chapter 3 my goodness God is changing someone's life Daniel 3 from verse 23 please very quickly Daniel 3 23 and these three Shadrach Meshach Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we're reading to 30 then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered and said lo I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach Meshach Abednego ye servants of the most high God come forth and they come hither then Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire uh-huh and the princes watch this governors captains kings counselors being gathered together saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power there are men like that men whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 ne king nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the god of shadrach i don't know his name but i know those who represent him i will name him by their victory blessed be the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word. A king's word can be changed, though. Yes, sir. Oh, I vow you will not rise. A king's word can be changed. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. 29. Look at the victory that this brought to the name of the Lord. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. And the king promoted Shadrach Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you and your children, your children's children, as many as are far off whom the Lord shall call. What is divine intervention? Write very quickly, please. We have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush. Divine intervention is said to occur when god steps in by god here we mean the god of the bible almighty el shaddai when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord don't forget to add that so when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified god in me john 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples
there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that god's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way I teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and Satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at jesus jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know god's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about god number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an umbrella someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high god had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory
Satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny, if allowed, becomes shredded in pieces. Listen, just because you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say, I'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you. No, no. He left Jesus for a season. Came back through Peter. Came back through Judas. On the third day when Jesus was going to arise, they locked up the grave, sealed it, and there were men who were seated. And the Bible says the angel came with power, rolled the stone, and sat on it. Jesus resurrected, he left, and the men came together. They said, look, um, something is wrong. Let's come together. And re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body. That's how determined Satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward. It is not strange and it did not start with you. Satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us. It's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming. It's been an ancient war. Anything that brings glory to the name of Jesus, anything that advances the purposes of God is Satan's business, invited or not. So when they were dedicating you as they lifted you, like Jesus was lifted. It's not only members that came for that child dedication. The devil was also hearing. Let me hear what this priest will say about this. Oh Lord, this child called Joshua Selman, I lift him up before you. Let him be a blessing to the nations. And the devil said, what did you say? I had blessing. Now I'm interested. Not because of what else you said. That means there is something about kingdom come in his life. You become an intentional project. Listen carefully oh why don't they like me who did i offend all that statement is just a superstitious talk the condition listen the qualification for an attack is that you are born the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you are qualified enough for an attack then when he sees you giving your life to jesus i hope you know demons witness these things Lord Jesus, I give you everything. And they are watching. And you are rolling on the ground, rolling in the house of God, and saying, my heart is yours, my life and my destiny. They know Satan was once in heaven. He knows the implication of genuine surrender. He knows you are making yourself usable. And he says, do you know what? Let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of God in his life. And can I tell you, provided you are still wearing this mortal body somewhere in the equation of your life you will fall short of obedience somewhere in the equation of your life through ignorance there will be some level of access until you learn what you need to know you will be a victim of the ignorance of it so satan will cash into that moment this is why we need divine intervention it was a system of advantage that was programmed by God's wisdom. So that if by any means, through ignorance, through wrong decisions, it is on the strength of mysteries like this, Paul can say we know that all things, even something that should make you fail, there is still a provision in the economy of God where you can be delivered. Someone shout amen. amen. Yes, sir. So when you say you are a Christian, you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is Jesus. No. You are saying you are one who by the privilege of God's grace, one you have been made a partaker of the life of God, justified. Are we together in Christ? Number two, you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding, you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots. These are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially. These forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life. Let's see what that family will become. They are right, except that when you bring out one mystery, one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox, you can end something that was supposed to be so. One of those mysteries, in addition to the much you have received, is called the mystery of divine intervention. God did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully 
there are three levels at which we encounter the power of God number one I need to say this before I begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet God as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level God directly number two there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed in principles you don't need to know him you don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power the moment you are compliant to and with the principle for instance you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow is the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth but it was programmed in principles you don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power this is a dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into business principles they have built systems structures they have built a very civilized society based on those principles even though they may not honor the God that powers that principle are we together so the first is a personal encounter with the God of the Bible. Second is obedience and compliance to principles. Principles work because at the back of them, there is an investment of a dimension of God's power. And then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women. Covenant alignment with men and women who God has trusted with certain graces. Direct encounter with God compliance and obedience to principles then covenant alignment with men and women i just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what i'm about to explain are we together the mystery of divine encounters it is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory one level and dimension of victory to the other one level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of Christ over sin over death over Satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of God's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that Jesus made in and through his finished work that means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command my life can be so defeated it does not look attractive to be a Christian I can misrepresent the purposes of God so every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression, that men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ, and we are telling the world he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, they will say we may not be able to see him, but let's look at you who are seeing him, and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he's savior, he's mighty, the ancient of days, we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent 
This is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, his bride, his body, the manifold wisdom of God. Are we together? Yes. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us, as can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Do you know why we teach this? We teach these truths, number one, because God loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of God's kingdom and in this side of eternity. But number two, we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of God's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny. Are we together? Have you seen marketers of products? Look up, please. There are a few people here, some of you may be, you know, company owners, and you have all kinds of products and services, and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company. You are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years, and look the skill that goes in. Make sure you're well suited. Make sure your communication is, is very articulate. Make sure you smile whether you are tired or not. Look at all that skill. We employ the people, give them a salary, motivate them, and send them. And even when they see their classmates, or their loved ones, or their brothers on the street, they are, not even as, they are so proud of what they are selling. And yet the validity is just six months. The validity is just two years. But we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of man. Listen carefully. It is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results. Because by doing it, you are the, the destiny of millions are depending on your results. So if you truly love God, don't just say, I love God. You must contend for superior levels of results. Let your light so shine before men. I need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this, um, there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people. Once it is not a talk about Jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness, respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of god everything together they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same we have been marketing jesus wrongly that's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face we need to reinvent our strategy come up with power come up with results nobody runs away from what works are we together so i need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths but the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped and they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge oh i want to serve jesus and they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. 
there is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day there is no bride who forgets her makeup forgets her shoe and just comes to stand no matter how much you are in a hurry if you want to present yourself as that bride get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life get serious about every aspect of your destiny if God tells you I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings can I tell you this the arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying but our target is not just the people we also need the kings because the kings have influence look what happened to Zacchaeus one encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded are we blessed these are principles of kingdom advance we have a series on that but for now it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God there are demons there are arsenals of darkness hear me brothers and sisters they are going to come and attempt to attack your life but you need the truth of God's Word the Bible says write this down Psalm 11 from verse 9 the B part Proverbs 11 I meant to say from verse 9 the B part it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory so divine intervention is real it's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life and tonight very quickly I'm going to give us four keys four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual in the life of a family use these keys and you will triumph bringing glory to the name of the Lord bringing honor to the name of Jesus Christ are you ready key number one prayer key number one the first key that makes for divine intervention you want to see the power of God come to change negative circumstances over your life you want to see the power of God come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that Jesus be revealed and be glorified the first key is prayer the priesthood ministry of prayer Psalms 18 Please give us the first six verses. We'll do a few readings. So please be patient. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Next verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. We're reading to verse 6. And then I'll mention a few verses. We'll just jump to them. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh -huh. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. Verse 6. In my distress... I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears very quickly jump to verse 14 14 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake yea he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them verse 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me go to verse 40 thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that i might destroy them that hate me next verse we're reading to 50 please quickly they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind i did cast them out as the dirt in the streets uh-huh 
It says, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me, and strangers shall submit themselves unto me. We're reading to 50. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avenged me and subdueth the people under me. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Two more verses. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen and sing praises unto your name. Verse 50. Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11 this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. As a result, um, Herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time. And then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the Lord in response to prayer came unto him. A light shined in the prison. He smote Peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands. Uh-huh. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. We we'll read down to 10. Let's go to 10 very quickly. The Bible says, When they were past the first and the second word or gate, they came to the gate that leadeth to the city, which opened unto them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forth with the angel departed from him. Last verse. The Bible now says, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a shorty that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people. God does not just deliver you from men. He delivers you from expectations. Are we together? But that happens at the instance of prayer. In Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 25 down to 34, the full text, we may not read everything. The Bible talks about Paul and Silas. Are we together? On account of a lady who they delivered, who used divination to bring money for people. And now, one thing led to the other. They were in the prison. Give it to us, please. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. Here's what the Bible says. At midnight, pay attention. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. 26, suddenly. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose, 27. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Now, followed the result of divine intervention. But Peter cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Uh-huh. 
and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must I do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the Bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to Jesus let's finish up he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ the one who now caused that intervention and thou shalt be saved and it will now affect your household and they speak unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house are you seeing now one divine intervention from the prison now the man is saved and his entire household and he took the same and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house whoever you want to lift Lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to save Lord you can save through me the salvation of a man and his entire family not just depending on a crusade depending on someone's results but it came through prayer apostle james taught us in chapter 5 and verse 13 he says if any of you are afflicted let him pray the moment you sense that there is an affliction you came back home your children are sick your husband returns back and he says i don't know what is happening in the office You lost money in business everything gone they collected your land your property these are events that require divine intervention your first port of call is to begin to pray this is why God gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not a Pentecostal issue the Bible says we have a limitation the limitation is that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the Holy Spirit ah, he knows oh he knows how to make intercession so I lock myself while I am praying my mind may be unfruitful but there is the intercessory ministry of the Holy Spirit prayer praying in the spirit but not just praying in the spirit word based prophetic declarations I'm showing you how to provoke intervention you cannot take the word of God out of the equation word based not superstitious prophetic declarations word based prophetic declarations two scriptures we're still talking on prayer Isaiah 43 and verse 26 believers learn this 43 26 Isaiah put me in remembrance he says let us plead together he says declare thou that thou might test be justified my hand is able to save my hand is able to lift but i'm waiting for you to declare hmm. yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with fresh oil my cup runs over you are declaring I have no covenant with death in the name of Jesus I declare as for me and my house you are making declarations because you are seeing storms rising you don't keep quiet when storms rise the worst thing to do is to be silent hear me I'm speaking to you because there are people storms all around your life when they woke Jesus Christ he did not discuss with the storm peace be still 
Kala Suda Parika Tuskiata Embre Ketuskia Hashala Bakata. Your spiritual life suddenly your fire for prayer down, your passion for the word down, favor down, everything down. You should know that you are surrounded. That there is something that is the time to open up your mouth. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and salvation. This is not just a Pentecostal thing, it's a formula for victory. Declare ye that thou mightest. Be justified. Oh, I reject death. I reject death in the name of Jesus. Don't feel bad and feel that's how this one said it and died. That's none of your business. You speak. You do your own part and declare over your destiny. I choose life. I set before you life and death. I choose life. I choose health. I choose victory by the Spirit of God. Thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. But none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked. I arise and shine because my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Where I've been deserted so that no man help them please. Passes through me. I become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Prayer. Listen. Please sit down. The moment believers lend this world over. The moment you see an unfavorable situation in your life, you know it is the devil because along with that situation will come the spirit of depression. And the assignment of depression is to keep you silent. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm speaking as a man of God. I know that depression has an assignment to keep you silent. Satan is the master of the flesh realm. So this is how my life will be. I thought this will work. I had a dream and I thought the job will come. And you now keep quiet. And the angels are saying, look at this. There is a law. We are ready to move. God is ready. Help them please. God is ready to move. Psalms 107 verse 2. These are the arsenals of victory. Psalms 107. Please very quickly. Let the redeemed of the Lord, if they are truly the redeemed, don't just think so. Don't just wish so. Say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are you learning now? You return back and there is a medical report that is disturbing just when that is happening your child brings a result after spending so much on his school fees you see an evil report are we together the moment that is happening you just hear that your investment has crashed you're a politician they told you okay this is supposed to be your position you're a man of god you come to church and it looks like everything is going down that's not the time to be quiet and that's not the time to attract sympathy you are the first prophet of your destiny go and shut your door remove your ceo regalia put on that priestly robe shake up a rakatosia someone blast in the spirit in one minute i will be silent in the name of jesus christ Listen, listen, believers hear me, hold on, hold on. Do you know that many believers allow tragedy to mount until it presses them down? That's when they resort to God as a last option. And I will not be silent. I will always worship.
please look at me. Look up, please. Listen. An evil report is happening. Your children are going haywire. As the man, you are not just ahead of the home for nothing. Wear your priestly regalia while your children are sleeping. Walk room by room. You are laying hands upon them, not my house. I build the spiritual fortification by prophesying. I decree and declare the foolishness of faith. I engage it. The righteousness of faith speaks on this one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I will help you. Come and meet me tomorrow. And you come tomorrow and say, well, Who asked you to come here? This favor. Just when you are going, you can't hit someone. Just when you learn to read the signs. Don't wait for evil to stay. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Don't be along with evil. Attack it from infancy. Hallelujah. You go to bed in the night and you have a funny dream that you know already shows that there is an attack that the spirit of death is following people in your family listen don't just wake up and write it in a jotter and and then when it happens you say, no get up and say no way in the name of jesus I, if it followed my father and my father's father i call as a priest and a king and a priest what based declaration listen it was it was god's servant bishop david oyedeko who said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter inside fire by mistake and say it's confusion no matter how mad he is when he sees fire he says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flaming fire You're sleeping and someone takes your name to a shrine for political reasons. Oh, let this person die or let this person not win. You don't have to go to the shrine right from where you are. Listen, believers hear me. This is not just some spiritual jamboree the times that we live in it will be risky to not know these truths and to not engage them your life literally hangs upon these truths let the redeemed of the lord say so please sit down, please sit down. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline